All right, here we go. This is your introduction to your worksheet today. Uh, day five, chemical properties and physical properties worksheet. If they're in your notebook, if you'd like to complete them in your notebook, if you'd like to do them electronically today, you'll go to the Google Slides. Give it a second to do its thing. By the way, a couple days ago, the copy thing wasn't working very well. It should be working now. Every time I've tested it for the last couple days, it's worked. I, from what I understand, it was just a glitch with uh, Google Slides. But this is your worksheet today. So you've got five slides of questions. It is um, Lengthy is the wrong word because once you start to get the hang of it, it's going to be pretty easy for you. You're going to start with some simple classifications. So you're going to identify the following things or properties as either chemical or physical. So for example, if I did this first one, blue color, we know because it's observed with the senses and it's determined without destroying the thing that it is a physical property. So I would type a P right here. Density, again, can be observed with the senses and it can be determined with, well, not really like, I mean, you can hold it, but you need a weight uh, or mallet, a measure, a measure, excuse me, my chair is a little bit squeaky today. Uh, measure, what would it call? you need to measure the mass and then the volume, but you could determine density without destroying the matter, so it is physical flammability or the ability for it to burn because this is indicating a substance that reacts with something else, in this case oxygen, and the matter will be changed into a new substance after it is considered a chemical property. So you would type a C. Okay, so that is how you do these ones. You're gonna do the rest by yourself. Let's go through how to do these ones. It is similar, so you're going to use the definitions of physical change and chemical change to identify what is taking place here in these reactions. So NaCl, or table salt, dissolving in water, a new substance is formed. We have a change in physical and chemical properties. So this would be considered a chemical change. Silver, when it tarnishes, there's a chemical reaction happening here. The tarnish is what makes it darker in color. There's a change in the chemical properties and a new substance is formed, so it would also be a chemical change. An apple being cut, this would be an example of a physical change because we're just changing shape, size, shape and size of the apple, but the apple is still the same, we're just cutting it. Number four, heat changing water or H2O into steam. This is again a physical change because we're just having a change in state. The water is still H2O, it's just in its gaseous form instead of its liquid form. And then you'll continue doing the rest by yourself. This would be a good activity, by the way, to do with a partner. So if you wanted to do this with a partner, you're more than welcome to. For this part, you're going to do about the same type of thing. Can you recognize the chemical and physical changes that are happening all around us? If you change the way something looks but haven't made a new substance, it's a physical change. We know that. If the substance has been changed into another substance, it's a chemical change. So if we put ice in the sun, later a puddle of water is formed, later the puddle is gone, what is happening here? Are we having a physical change or a chemical change? Am I changing the chemical composition or destroying the substance? No, it's still water, just changing state, so that would be a physical change. When I take two chemicals and I mix them together and a gas is produced, this is an example of a chemical change because we're changing the way something is chemically. We're changing the composition or what it's made up of. So that's an example of a chemical change. Uh, remember here, we'll do number three because it's kind of tricky. A bicycle changes color as it rusts. While color is a physical thing, the rust or the Reaction with oxygen in the air is considered a chemical change. So number three is C, chemical change. For this part of the worksheet, you're going to read the scenario. You're going to pick whether it's a chemical or a physical change happening, and then you're going to support your answer with evidence. Your evidence comes from right here. Let's see. 
right here. So if you've decided that a physical change occurred, your evidence would either be, would be both of these, a change in shape or state has happened, no new substance is formed. If you decided that a chemical change has occurred, your evidence would be this right here. And you would type that into this box right here. You get one point for each of these, so both of them are important. Let's do number two together. Your friend decides to toast a piece of bread but leaves it in the toaster too long. The bread is black and the kitchen is full of smoke. Are we seeing a chemical or physical change? Hopefully you are able to identify this as a chemical change because we are burning or reacting with oxygen and heat the toast or bread, which is now toast and smoke. A chemical change has happened. A new substance is formed. That charcoal on the toast, the charred toast is now, is a new substance. And then you're going to go through the rest of it. All right, last slide. You are going to answer true or false. Changing the size and shape of pieces of wood would be a chemical change. We know that's false. It would be a physical change. You type F right here. You can do the rest on your own. Good luck. Hope the explanation helped. If you have any more questions, let me know. Each one is pretty much worth one point. These are worth two points because you've got two parts of it. One point, one point each, one point each. Again, this would be a great activity to do with a partner, and you're welcome to. You just both need to turn in the worksheet. Have a great day.